How's it going, guys? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to the first dojo show, Dojo TV, whatever you want to call it. Pretty much a show where I talk about all things that matter to me, uh, as well as the community that I have, including motion graphics, visual effects, filmmaking, and pretty much industry news. So we're going to be talking about a lot of things in this show, and this is the first one, so bear with me here. I'm trying to work things out. First time really talking to a camera, really, and just kind of recording this, kind of the show format. But if you guys like this kind of format, let me know down below and tell me what you guys think. So in today's episode, I want to talk about the new features that was just released for After Effects CC 2014 that was just released today after the conference or the event that Adobe had today, talking about the new features and all their products. And there's a lot of new changes, but I just want to talk about mostly After Effects because I think that's what the most of my community consists of, After Effects users. So I just want to talk about some of the features that are now available to us. These features were actually announced uh, during April as well as the NAB 2014. So we had a few sneak peeks at some of the features uh, back then in April as well as in, during NAB, but now it's official, we can actually grab it. But one of my favorite new features is actually the feature that allows you to pretty much apply masks to effects and to apply masks to effects specifically. So before you had to essentially, if you wanted to mask you know, something out and effect out, you would have to pretty much mask the whole layer out. You can't, you couldn't mask one particular effect out necessarily. You would have to actually mask the whole layer out. And if you had multiple effects on that layer, then you would pretty much mask the whole entire layer, including all the effects applied to it. But now you can actually apply it a mask to a specific effect and essentially mask out a certain effect and single it out and, you know, a, pretty much specify where it takes an effect and where it doesn't. So it's a very, very handy feature. John from MotionWorks actually has a really nice tutorial or video over it. So check it out. You can view more information down in the description down below or in the article down below. It's a very, very handy little feature. You also have an ability to essentially lower down the opacity for that effect. So it's kind of like a blend with original or blend with original layer option with the effects. So you can pretty much, you know, decrease or increase the opacity or the you know effectiveness of that effect. Uh, so it's a pretty handy feature. So brings more compositing abilities to effects and after effects. So the ability to apply mass to specific single effects and be able to blend in to your original layers and fine tune that amount and it's keyframeable is very, very, very handy. We also have two brand new effects that will help you with your keying and after effects. We have the key cleaner and we also have the advanced spill suppressor, which allows you to pretty much clean up your key and you know get a finer key. There's also a new preset which you can apply that will apply pretty much key light and all those two effects and in a nice combination that will help you clean up your key. So pretty handy feature. I think After Effects does a pretty good job at giving you all the tools you need to create a pretty nice clean key. Uh, which is pretty good in After Effects, so thumbs up for that. Now, in addition to the two new effects for Keen, we also have a new updated Curves effects, so you can actually save and load presets. You can pretty much, it's pretty much a responsive, enhanced user interface for the Curves effects, which is very, very handy because I use Curves all the time. And again, John has an awesome overview video of what's new in the Curves effects, so pretty handy stuff. Now, another awesome geeky feature that After Effects CC has now is the ability to support HTML5 panels. And this is kind of like a geeky thing that a lot of uh, you guys may not care about so much, but it will affect you guys because we will be having a lot of new kind of scripts or plugins and pretty much new panels for After Effects that allows you to be more interactive. So right now we have scripts and we have a few plugins, but in the future, we'll have additional panels like the cooler panel that was just announced. It's kind of like a cooler interface. Um, essentially, we can do HTML5 stuff Stuff, CSS stuff, JavaScript stuff within a little panel. So you can expect a lot of Creative Dojo products to be coming soon with the new HTML5 panels. Again, it's kind of hard to explain, but essentially better content, better tools for you in After Effects so you can dock it into your side panels. Lastly, the latest version of After Effects allows you to easily add Typekit fonts. So you can actually go into the website and browse through all the fonts. If you want to install it, simply click install and it'll pop into After Effects right away. And I don't believe you need to restart your computer for this. So it's a pretty cool feature. Allows you to quickly, quickly add things. Allows you to quickly work without any, you know, slowdown or performance slowdown or workflow slowdown. So it's a pretty cool feature. And of course, there's a lot of other features behind the hood, you know, all that stuff. And it's a lot of minor details and minor tweaks uh, to the latest version of After Effects. I'll have a full list of changes down below in the article. But this is just some of the features that I want to talk about today in this video. Some of the main ones that kind of stood out that everyone's kind of talking about. So if you're not familiar with those features, now you know. So go update your After Effects. So before we go, I want to go ahead and recommend some external tutorials that's around the web that's not really by me so don't worry it's not self-promotion but i do want to talk about a few tutorials that i've been watching lately that i've been looking at lately that's kind of relatively new 
First, Gray Machine or Harry Frank actually released a new tutorial. I know it's been a long time where he talks about how to create some abstract backgrounds using Cinema 4D and After Effects. It's a really, really basic tutorial, but it's actually a very good tutorial. You might learn a thing or two in Cinema 4D and After Effects. So check out Harry Frank's tutorial where he creates a really nice, interesting background. A few other tutorials that you might want to check out are from Matt Trunks. He actually released two tutorials lately, one about X particles and how to create splash effects. Another tutorial on how to create a really nice cell shading 2D cartoonish kind of look shader within Cinema 4D. So both really two interesting good tutorials from Matt Trunks. Check it out. Now, if you're new to Cinema 4D and you want a place to start learning progressively, constructively, there's the Great Scale Gorilla source where he actually made a whole course or I guess a mini course or boot camp of how to get started in Cinema 4D. That's a pretty good start. But if you want a more detailed, constructive course, Cineversity actually has a course that teaches you pretty much everything you need to know about Cinema 4D to kind of get started uh, step by step. And it's free, which is the best price. So check that out. Now, if you're a Linda subscriber, I'm actually currently watching EJ's new course where he talks about designing for sports graphics package. It's pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, really focused on MoGraph and all that stuff. So it's very cool. Again, you need a Linda subscription to, in order to watch it. But again, if you have one, check that out. It's pretty cool. So check those tutorials out, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy them. Again, all the links will be down in the video description down below. We can read the full article and all the links are down there. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about X particles and I'll be showing you around X particles a little bit as well as showing you some content for X particles from other people. So can't wait for that. If you guys have any suggestions for this show, maybe some questions or maybe some suggestions of what I should do differently and some topics or ideas, please let me know in the description down below. Now, if you can think of a new name for the show, you know, instead of the Dojo Show or Dojo TV, leave your suggestions down below in the comments. I'll definitely look forward to looking at them. So that's pretty much it, guys, for this first Dojo show, I guess. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time.